Hello and welcome to Willeke TV News. I am Messi Mifabadidi. The news headlines. Governors, senators, beg Nigerians, says our chief over soon in Eastern message. In business, Naira closes at $1,309, bank sale at $2.5 billion. And the foreign sin, Pope Six Peace in Africa urges Russia Ukraine prisoners exchange. And in sport, Oshoala expected on Thursday as Falcons camp opens. Welcome back and now the news and details. As Christians celebrate Easter, governors, senators and other prominent individuals have urged Nigerians not to lose hope in the face of the economic challenges in the country. In their various Easter messages on Sunday, they expressed confidence that economic reforms being implemented by President Bola Tinubu would soon end hardship in the country. In Baba Ganazulung's Easter message, the Borneo State Governor called on the Christian community in the state of Nigeria to pray for Tinubu to succeed in administering the affairs of Nigeria. And now, the Enugu State's police commanders announced the killing of two members of the Eastern Security Network, the security outfit of the indigenous people of Biafra, during a raid on their camp. The command spokesman, Daniel Undukwe, in a statement on Sunday, said the fighters engaged policemen in a gun duel but bowed to superior firepower. Now, according to him, some of the IPOP fighters escaped with gunshot wounds, now calling on hospitals in Enugu State to be on the lookout and alert the police if any patients present with gun gunshot wounds. Now, Undukwe said the intelligence guided raid was carried out at about 2.30 a.m. on March 30th by operatives of the Command 7 and the Anti-Cultism Tactical Squad. It said the raided camp was in Akuke community, Enugu South local government area, of the state. According to him, the raid was pursuant to crime prevention strategies devised by the Commissioner of Police and the State Command, Kanayo Uzuegu, for the Easter period. He said one AK-47 rifle, one submachine gun, one stainless pump action gun, 27 live and uh, 23 expanded rounds of 7.62 mm caliber ammunition were recovered during the raid. And now the Borneo state government said it has started probing some non-government organizations in the state for their alleged involvement in the burning of internally displaced person camps in the state. The state's Commissioner for Information and Internal Security, Professor Osman Taro, disclosed this in a statement on Sunday. The state in the recent past witness fire outbreaks in a number of IDP camps. Such cases have been reported in Medjugorje, Mafa and Monguno local government areas where it is nearly a yearly occurrence, worsening the plight of thousands of IDPs in the state. Recently, two IDP camps, Muna, Mafa, local government and Muguno camp, went up in flames, displacing a fresh over 30,000 IDPs. The commissioner in a Sunday statement said the recent rise in the frequency of infinites in IDP camps had been matter of concern and all lands were on deck to forestall any further occurrence of fire outbreaks in the states. Let's go on a short break. We'll be right back. Follow us on our social media handles at Ubeleke TV. Visit our website at www.ubeleke.tv for a thrilling journey. Ubeleke TV, rising star at the fairground. Welcome back. In the last two weeks, the Central Bank of Nigeria and other banking institutions have improved dollar supply to the foreign exchange market by $2.5 billion, making the Naira strengthen to 1,309 Naira against the United States dollar. Now, official figures obtained from the FMGQ Securities Exchange reveal that the Naira closed at 1,309 Naira per dollar on Thursday, now compared to the 1,300 Naira per dollar recorded a day earlier. However, it still falls within the eight weeks uh, low for the Naira as it, is as, it as it continues, I beg your pardon, to strengthen against the US dollars. And of course, it closed on Friday due to the public holiday. Similarly, 
forex transactions between willing sellers and buyers at the Nigerian autonomous foreign exchange market increased by 106% to $857 million at the close of trading activity on Thursday, marking the highest level since the central bank implemented its new forex policies. Now, this latest development is also the largest turnover since 2021, with the closest figure being 760 million US dollars on June 2nd, 2022. The average daily forex turnover recorded in March has been around 220 million US dollars. Well, this year, uh, we've seen 177 million US dollars in average uh, forex turnover. Moving on, the federal government has adopted a virtual means of evacuation of crude oil that involves the utilization of barges and trucks for the transportation of crude from the point of production to injection storage points for eventual transportation to export terminals. It said the alternative crude oil evacuation systems was implemented to avoid production determined losses and other undesirable consequences as a result of pipeline disruption and outages. Now, this is contained in a new presentation by the Nigerian Upstream Petroleum Regulatory Commission on Stability in the Nigerian Energy Sector, Integrated Strategies for Infrastructure, Transportation and Security, Nigeria loses trillions of naira to crude oil theft and pipeline vandalism annually, a development that made the government consider virtual means of transporting the commodity. And now about 107 companies, including Dangote and Mikano International, are currently enjoying tax exemption from the federal government despite its insistence to discontinue the program and drastic steps to improve its revenue base. It also increased the number of beneficiaries enjoying pioneer status under the Industrial Development Income Tax Act by 24 from 83 in the first quarter of 2023 to 107 firms by the fourth quarter of 2023. This was disclosed in the latest pioneer status incentive reports released by the Nigerian Investment Promotion Commission and obtained by correspondence on Sunday. Now, an analysis of the PSI report showed that while the requests of 79 firms were newly received, 211 firms are pending, 56 companies had applications approved in principle, while 19 firms were granted incentive extensions from another three years to 2026. Up next are stories on the foreign scene. After the short break, stay tuned. Follow us on our social media handles at Ubeleke TV. Visit our website at www.ubeleke.tv for a thrilling journey. Ubeleke TV, rising star at the fairground. Welcome back to Foreign Stories. Pope Francis and his Easter message on Sunday prayed for peace on the African continent and sought the exchange of prisoners between Russia and Ukraine in a bid to put an end to the war. The Pope urged the war to resist the logic of weapons in his Easter message at the Vatican, using growing health fairs as he greeted thousands of Catholics. Later, seven year olds who be at Orbi to the city and the world. Blessing came after he led Easter Mass in front of 60,000 worshippers at St. Peter's Square while appearing in good spirits. Now, Francis also urged the world leaders to spare no efforts in combating the scourge of human trafficking to free its victims. And now in entertainment, very dark man has gotten people talking after he sent a message to Toncho DK, Yabo Joe, Yemuli and Daddy Freeze hours after his release. The skincare activist, who had been detained by Nigerian authorities for more than seven days, was ultimately released on Sunday, March 31st, 2024. However, it appears that Very Dark Man is still unable to control the actions that led to his incarceration as it goes on a mild ranting spree. A video of him giving a message to Tonto DK, Yabojo, Daddy Freeze, and Blessing CEO when he returned home after days in police jail has gone viral. In the viral video message, Very Dark Man attacked on Todiki and Yabojo, saying they couldn't break a spirit no matter how hard they tried. He also sent messages to others like that Freeze, Yamuli, and Blessing CEO. VDM went on to say that everyone he called out was part of the decadence that was killing the lives of young Nigerians. Now, Martins cautioned them in his video message that if they did not stop being bad, 
they would have to learn the hard way. In sports, Higher than the highly anticipated clash between Nigeria and South Africa for a spot at the women's football event of the 2024 Olympics in Paris, Super Falcons camp opens on Sunday with the Nigeria Football Federation announcing that Asisat Shola is not expected until Thursday. Now, according to the media team of the NFF, captain and Atletico Madrid forward Rashidat Ajibade will be among the early birds as the team begins preparation for the game against the Bayana Bayana. The two teams, arguably the best women football squads on the African continent, will battle in a two-legged affair as a battle for one of the two tickets from Africa for Paris 2024 Olympics women's football. Now, the first leg of the encounter will take place at the Moshuda Abiola National Stadium, Abuja, on Friday, while the return leg is scheduled for the Luftos Vesafed Arena in Pretoria five days later. Ajibadi Husavi, Skew and Sapiens helped the Falcons to round off 16 at, le at last year's FIFA World Women's World Cup in Australia, and New Zealand will be joined in the roost by home base goalkeeper Linda Jukwaku and defender Jumoke Alani, who was drafted in following injury to Saudi Arabia based Ashleigh Pompeir as early birds. And that's a wrap on the news, but before we go, here's a recap of the headlines. Governors, senators, beg Nigerians, says our chief over soon in Eastern message. In business, Naira closes at $1,309 per dollar, bank sale at $2.5 billion. On the foreign scene, Pope Six Peace in Africa urges Russia Ukraine prisoners exchange. And in sport, Oshoala expected on Thursday as Falcons camp opens. Kindly follow us on all our social media handles at Owilike TV and visit our website at www.owilike.tv. I am Messi Babadidi. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your day.